Hello, everybody. Welcome to Political. My name's Connor Allen, and I'm here with the Iron Smith. What's up? It's the boys, the Iron here. <laughs> Crazy as ever, again. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and today we're going to be talking a bit about the tragic passing of Ruth Bader Ginsburg, who passed away a couple of days ago. Uh, I know you're all ready to hear about this. I know you're all ready to get going about this. But before we do, guys, please, please do check if you subscribed uh down below uh and do consider subscribing if you haven't already it helps us out a lot with the algorithm uh please do share the video with your friends give it a like and tell us your comment down below we want to hear your opinion too even if you disagree with us we aren't you know a leftist hate mob we're not going to cancel you for disagreeing with us um mm. so let's go on to today's video ruth bad again passed away a couple of nights ago um what did you think of the reaction, Yayan? Because it was so different, the reaction between Biden and the Democrats and, and Donald Trump and the Republicans, wasn't it? Yeah. You know, dare I say, I think Donald Trump was rather presidential with this one. Um, he, he kind of learned off the cuff um, about the death of Ruth, and he just came across as very sincere. It's clear that he has a tremendous amount of respect for the woman, and even though they disagree, obviously on, on on many issues, I'm sure politically and you know philosophically, um, he obviously had tremendous respect for the life that she led and and um, what she'd achieved in her life from a professional perspective to 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 be just the second ever woman to be elected to the Supreme Court. Um, whereas the, the the Democrats are more specifically, anyway, Joe Biden seemed to be. You know, turning into that political gear very quickly and wanted they to... They couldn't wait, could they? they yeah. The first thing that came out, Barack Obama, within an hour and a half, had a statement out saying they had to... Um, uh, no reappointment until the election. Yeah. Right? They, they'd planned... It's almost like they'd planned it in advance. It's almost as if they, they had a foreknowledge of it. They, mm. they were that quick in politicising the tragic death. And How, you are... Just on a side point, have you ever seen a former president be so involved in the current yeah. administration as Obama I mean, is? I mean, who is there? George Bush disappeared. Even Bill Clinton. Yeah. He, he was virtually absent from Hillary's campaign, wasn't he? It's like your time has come and gone. And I just think there should be, It's you know, listen, it, it's almost like a precedent, really. It's not, obviously, it's, it's not a rule. You can do what you want after you've been president. But it's just kind of like this gentleman's agreement. That once you've been president, you just kind of lay low a little bit and you don't get too involved in what's happening in the future of the country. And Obama just seems to have thrown all of those rules out the window and um it's just so concerned with it's almost like he feels he needs to prop up the democratic party right um i just think it's a little bit sad really i just think he should just pay his respects and then that's it he should not be making any political state i agree totally and it, it really did i i'm i'm more of a, a floating uh vote in the new line but I I was really sad to, saddened to see the the Democrats reaction you know because Ms. Bader Ginsburg she meant a hell of a lot to many young women and many young men as well across the mm. world I mean even my social media here in Europe almost every uh, politically active woman I know posted uh, you know quotes from Ms. Bader Ginsburg uh, posted many things she had, really had a place in people's hearts and the Democrats are just using her death blindly um, do you think it's going to damage voters' perception of, of the Democrats? Because I think it will. Disgusted um, by them. Yeah, potentially. I think a lot of people will, especially those maybe that are a little bit right-leaning or, or definitely in the centre ground, will, will feel as though they're kind of desecrating her memory a little bit. And um, they'll certainly be a little bit concerned by uh, the way that they've been very quick to think about the political... Uh, repercussions as opposed to just taking that time for people to you know mourn someone who's died on the supreme court you know this is this is this is a moment for the nation to be you, you know kind of go through that little period of like oh think about you know their legacy and what they've done as opposed to think about the political repercussions at least give it a day you know <laughs> give it 24 uh, hours right so and that, um and that's it might exactly 
Sorry, go on. Yeah, it might turn. I was just going to say it might turn voters off a little bit. Certainly, I think it. I, 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 I think it has the potential to do that. Yeah. And so, when you were saying, you know, leave it a day or so, that's exactly what Donald Trump did, right? I mean, uh, I know Mitch McConnell came out a couple of hours afterwards, um, mm-hmm. but the difference is. Trump and McConnell have responsibilities, right? In a scenario such as this, you can't have the state, the representatives of the state going silent. They have to set out some sort of path for for what's going Mm. to happen next, right? Uh, So Mitch McConnell said that there will be a vote on Donald Trump's nominee. And Donald Trump said in a North Carolina rally that he will be appointing someone. Should we watch the video? Yeah. Both the 2016 and the 2018 elections, the American people chose a president and a Senate majority, united in their commitment to selecting nominees who believe in applying the Constitution as written, right? Both the White House and the Senate majority have a moral duty to fulfill the promises they made to the voters, and that is exactly what we're going to do. We said that if for any reason we have a vacancy on the United States Supreme Court, we will fill that vacancy. We're not going to say, and by the way, we have plenty of time. There's a lot of time. You know, you're talking about, you're talking about January 20th, right? Still that seat. So we will uphold equal justice under the law for citizens of every race, color, religion, and creed. I will be putting forth the nominee next week. It will be a woman. It will be a woman, unless... So obviously, in front of a roaring crowd of thousands, uh, Trump's announced that he's going to be appointing two women. Uh, well, his shortlist to, for the appointee will be two women. So maybe if we just talk a bit about whether he should push ahead first, and then we'll talk about uh, his nominees. Um, I think it's right for him to push ahead. Um, you know, I think he, he. I think some people will say no, and some people will say yes. In regards to whether or not it's going to be good for the election campaign and this kind of thing, or whether or not people will uh, side with the Republicans to push ahead with nominee. I don't know. It's hard to say. Obviously, a lot of people will make the argument, well, obviously, when Scalia died in February 2016, the Republicans refused to nominate or refused to uh, push forward and... Um, ratify Obama's... Yeah, ratify uh, Obama's choice. Uh, choice. And, um, you know, there are some Republicans on record saying that, you know, uh, Lindsey Graham said, you know, if if uh, this happened in 2020 with Trump, then you can, you know, say, you know, have me. Hold my words against me. Yeah, hold my words against me. Um, Having said that, obviously, if the Democrats, after saying for for so long, hey, if there if if. There is a nomination to be made during election year. We should make it. Now they are the ones that look like hypocrites in this scenario. And in regards to Trump, obviously he wasn't in office at the time. So as far as he's concerned, he doesn't you know he doesn't have a record on this of what he thinks that should be done. It is his duty to put forward the nomination at this moment in time because there is a vacancy in the Supreme Court. And if the Senate decides that they want to confirm and ratify the nomination um you know then obviously that is democracy working as the constitution said that it should um i don't i don't necessarily know if the republicans uh, they have a 53 47 majority in the senate right now i think um and i know already two senators have said um that they wouldn't vote for a, a nomination at this moment in time so obviously it will be tight uh, but that you know, that is democracy at work. Obviously, if the Senate decide, if the Senate decides they don't, they don't want to ratify it, then then they don't ratify it. I do think, from Trump's perspective, though, it is his duty at this point to put forward the nomination, whether or not the Senate ratifies it or not, is also their duty. Yeah. Absolutely, it is a duty. 
And it's so important as well with this election campaign because we've never seen an election campaign like this, have we, uh, in terms of the um, uh, dispute over mail-in ballots, in terms of the dispute over the riots, in terms of the looming electoral violence afterwards. It is quite feasible that there will be a very important legal challenge that goes yeah. straight to the Supreme Court at some point, right? And back in 2016, Obama's case for um, for immediately reappointing a judge was that there are deadlocks in the Supreme Court that will not be able to be broken, okay? Yeah. And it's exactly the same here, okay? If anything, a reasonable person would predict there's going to be a very important legal issue and there needs to be a full Supreme Court in session. Trump would be advocating... Trump would be uh, advocating... Um, he wouldn't be doing his duty if he didn't appoint someone. It's a matter of systems, it's a, amount of, a matter of procedure more than uh, precedence, more than you know, self-benefit, don't you think? Yeah, certainly. Um, there, is, there is that very real concern that um, if there is some kind of legal issue with the election, which you know is, is, is a case the likelihood. That yeah, I don't know if you call it a likelihood, but it, there is a there is a very reasonable reasonable um, potential for such a thing to happen. Obviously, um, when it comes to Trump's concerns about election fraud, and you, when you look at Biden uh, or the Democrats, and and they have concerns about uh, the ability of the postal service to actually do their job in 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 returning ballots, um, you know. We talked about this before. There's a very real concern that either candidate refuses to concede or accept the results of the election, and we may end up in a situation where this goes to the Supreme Court. So I do think it is important in that regard. That is a very good argument to suggest that yes, there needs to the Supreme Court needs to be at full complement. Mm. Um, and and uh, but but in in terms of Trump and what he's done, like I said before, like. You know, it's his duty to nominate someone. Whether or not the Senate passes it is another matter. Uh, but this whole issue that came four years ago was something that happened before Trump was elected. Um, and it's really his prerogative as president whether it or not he decides to nominate someone or not. So I just, yeah. And the voters are seeing it, right? Uh, there's a lot of people looking rather hypocritical right now. Democrats and Republicans. Yeah, both but of like them. Like you say, yeah, Trump wasn't there. Trump, Trump isn't a hypocrite. He's the one coming out of this looking very presidential. He's looking at the, like the statesman. Hmm. Everybody, you know, well, the, the mainstream media paint him out not to be. He's just proved to every single voter in America that he is a presidential statesman. He's not swayed by the outrage by a leftist mob like Biden. Um, he cracks on and he gets on with the jobs. And I think that's going to be quite decisive come election day. You think? Yeah, certainly. I think it, you know there's a real opportunity for him to you know come out from this situation with more support than he had going into this situation. Um, certainly, the way that he reacted to the uh, you know to the death and the way he's gone forward now, this is his duty. He's carrying out his duty. And all those other matters, that is a matter for the House, uh, well, for the Congress to decide, or for the Senate to decide more, you know, more specifically. Uh, but it is his role to to nominate someone, just as it was Obama's role to nominate someone before, and the Senate decided to reject it at that point. One hundred percent. And should we talk a bit about his nominees as well? Then, yeah, so he's chosen two women. Okay, mm. and I'm not sure if you saw it on Twitter beforehand, but there were lots of people who are anticipating the Democrats' tactic. Right, mm. everybody knew there's going to be a sexual assault allegation against the the judge that uh, yeah, the person it that was. <laughs> yeah, it, it's inevitable, right? You know, um, mystery sources, uh, anonymous sources, blah blah blah. Okay, do you think he's be beaten the progressives at their own game here? Yeah, he has by by saying or suggesting that you know certainly it's going to be a woman, and obviously we don't know exactly who that will be now. Um, there are a couple of suggestions, um, obviously of who it will be. Um, Amy Amy Coney Barrett or Barbara Lagoa. 
Um, obviously, both of them, as you would expect, you know, have a more of a conservative view um, on both pro life. Yeah, both pro life on the constitution, and this is the really when we're talking about the Supreme Court, this is the battle that concerns um, the Democrats and the Republicans more than anything is uh, rulings on pro life laws. Certainly, so um, they're both pro life, and that is very significant. Mm. But what? A lot yeah, of Christians but, flocking to Trump's banner after this. Yeah, certainly. And I think what you um, see by him s saying that it's going to be a woman is he's kind of playing, the like you say, he's playing the liberals at their own game uh, because it's going to be very difficult for, this, for them to criticise a woman um, on their record or their personal record or attack them uh, or attack their character in particular as they did with uh, Kavanaugh, for instance, by, let's like say, coming out with these, um, you know, claims of sexual assault or whatever and this kind of thing. Um, and, of course, unless someone has been convicted of something, um, you know, it's very easy to Innocent just... Food, yeah, get someone to basically make an accusation. I don't, know if they're, I don't know if they're telling the truth or not, but the reality is that you can't have someone who has... Uh, led a very distinguished career um, in the justice circuit and established themselves as a top judge, and then uh, to the point where they they are, um, you know, have earned that nomination to be a member of the Supreme Court, and just because people don't like their views. Uh, you can just kind of get someone to make up a claim and say, oh, well, they've done this or that without being convicted of it and be able to destroy their career. I think that's wrong. I don't think that's right. It's not just their views, is it? Because as we all know, in 2020, it is immoral to be a, a straight white male. Um, and if, <laughs> if you are old, then, then you know, even worse. Um, so, I mean, I think by... I mean, you're absolutely right. Um, he's headed off that avenue of attack. He's headed off another avenue of attack, hasn't he? Because uh, I'm not sure if anyone's noticed over the last six years or so, but uh, people have been rather critical of Trump. You know, they've held him <laughs> up as this kind of symbol of the patriarchy. You know, he's, I mean, yeah. an old white man. <laughs> he's not mm. getting off easy, folks. And so does this not show, I mean, to me, I think that just shows that, I mean, he, you know, you hear, it, you hear him in the rally praising these intelligent women based on nothing more than their, the strength of their career, the strength of their character, and the strength of their intelligence, okay? That's what you want to hear in a president. He's shown just how pro-woman he has he is. Yeah, certainly. And I, you know, was a little bit concerned um, sort of earlier or yesterday and kind of earlier um, that this might not be a good road for the Republicans to go down to try and kind of push through this nomination. Um, but I think what we've seen is Trump actually handled the situation perfectly, exactly as you would expect um, a great president to handle the situation. And, you know, like I said, whether or not the Senate ratified the nomination is their prerogative. But in terms of Trump and the way he's handled himself, I think he has, you know, like you say, proved a lot of critics wrong. Um, by bringing in a woman for the nomination, um, he's shown obviously, you know, like it, it just de weaponizes a lot of these arguments and attacks that go towards him, saying that he's sexist or this and that. Um, and it's not as if these women aren't, uh, don't have a record that suggests that they can be, you know, on the Supreme Court. They've got an absolutely exempl you know, exemplary record uh, of what they've done and they've got a great career. And they should be, they should be um, in contention for the nomination. So, so as Ruth Bader Ginsburg said, women move long where decisions are being made. Hmm. And Trump's following through on yeah. that. I, I do believe there is an argument as well that when it comes to the Supreme Court, when you're talking about the Constitution of America, people ruling on this thing that there should be, um, you know, more of an equal representation. On that level so i i understand as well that it, obviously if you have a female that's died in this case w with ruth that you would um you know potentially look to replace her with a woman as well who obviously 
you know, has the credentials <laughs> to, <laughs> to serve on the Supreme Court. So, you know, oh, yeah, yeah. I, think, I think Trump's played a blinder on this one politically, but also just in terms of, um, you know, how he's dealt himself on a personal level as well. Um, I think you know he's come across as very genuine. A lot of people perhaps hadn't seen that side to him before, um, and now that they have, you know maybe that will kind of sway them towards voting for him. Absolutely, I 100% agree. And there you have it, folks. Uh, Yian Smith advocating for <laughs> equal representation. <laughs> it's the first and the only time you're going to hear that. So you know, make sure you save the clip before we take it down. Um, and definitely, you know. Tragic death of Ruth Bader Ginsburg, but Trump set to come out of this looking quite a bit better than Joe Biden. Thanks very much for watching, and do please like the video. Do please subscribe to the video if you enjoy the content. Uh, also, if you share it with people you know who think you think might be interested, that helps us out a lot too. Thank you so much, guys. Until next time.